Check. Is your battery on? I'll say good morning <laughs> while we're waiting to see if we're going to have uh, music and all the technical stuff is worked out. <coughs> it's always it's, it's always a surprise. Better, you just okay. never know if it's going to work, you know? So we're still getting that figured out. But Yeah, it was working a moment ago. One, two, one, two. Oh, it's working. Oh, it's, working. It's, it's red, though, so if it cuts out, I apologize. Because I don't know what that means. <laughs> Why is it red? Yeah, it's red, but does that mean it's unhappy? <coughs> Could mean. It could mean it's getting a low battery, so yeah, we'll, we, we better get hurried and, and get, it, get it done there so we don't have to worry about that. I appreciate that. So I want to welcome everyone. This is the third Sunday of Easter, believe it or not. And I think we forget sometimes that Easter is a season, just like Lent is a season. And how many of you realize, you know, we had the 40 days of Lent, and we have in the season of Easter, same number of days. But I think we forget how we, in, in Lent, we prepare to receive our Lord once again, remembering what he did on the, on the cross for us. And I think we forget, what are we doing in the Easter season? What are we preparing for? The suspension is killing you, huh? <laughs> I think she said ascension. Ascension. Not quite ascension. Pentecost where we're waiting for the Holy Spirit to come down. And I think a lot of us want to forget about preparing ourselves, opening ourselves up to the Spirit, because the Spirit might actually be nudging us to be stepping out in our faith and trying something new, looking a different way. And so, but I want to invite you during the rest of this Easter season to in invite yourself to open yourselves up to seeing the Spirit and how it moves in your life and asking the Spirit to bless you and breathe on you once again so that we can really celebrate on that Pentecost day. I have a couple of announcements. We have our fellowship next week. We'll have between the two <coughs> services for our seniors who are graduating. So if you know any of the seniors that are graduating, let Bev know. And she, I think we have at least two people that we know of. So we, uh, anyone who's graduating, we're going to celebrate that next week. So come to the fellowship hall at that time. And also, uh, the Children's Hunger Project. They're going to be doing that again, and that's going to be June 8th. And it starts at 5.30 and goes to 7.30. It's, it's a wonderful project. I think we do it maybe once a quarter where they gather for two hours and they're packing up all this food and providing food for the, for the children in our community. Believe it or not, we do have children who are not uh, getting their breakfast or lunch and so we're able to provide that. So it's a worthwhile project. Maybe the Holy Spirit is nudging you to, to join that project. So you'll see a sign-up sheet out in the Narthex area. You can check our website uh, if you want to know any more about that. Are there other announcements we need to make for the good of the family? If not, I'm going to invite us to stand as you are able and let us go ahead and sing our first song together. Come, now is the time to worship. Every tongue will confess you 
Lord God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time. Said you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come, 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 come. Amen. Come to worship. Why don't we look around and see who is worshiping with us today? So if you don't know someone who's sitting behind you or next to you, introduce yourselves and say hello. <laughs> see, we even have people all the way from Wisconsin here. Praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome. Let us pray. Eternal and merciful God, with all of the angels and all the saints, we laud your majesty and might. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go ahead and <coughs> sing our next song. Here I am to worship. Here I am to worship. reading of the lessons.
The first reading today is from Acts 9, 1 through 20. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found anyone who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand if you are able for the reading of the gospel. And it's the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 21st chapter. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and he jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. 
Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you were used to fasten your own belt and go to wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. You know, I'd been a, a fan of Lance Armstrong for a number of years. Lance won the Tour de France, one of the most grueling sporting events on the planet. And he won it seven consecutive times from 1999 to 2005. And several of those wins came after his battle with testicular cancer. Throughout the years, Lance, he was repeatedly, he was accused of using banned performance enhancing <coughs> drugs. And Lance, he not only adamantly denied those accusations, but he often viciously attacked his accusers. And then came January 17, 2013, the day that Lance appeared on Oprah Winfrey's show and for the first time publicly admitted that the accusations about his use of performance enhancing drugs were true after all. The public reaction to Lance's admission through, though not surprising, was often cruel and vindictive. Here are just a few of the quotes that surfaced in the days following Lance's admission. Lance Armstrong says, I'm a flawed character. That's like the Pacific Ocean saying I'm a little damp. Another one. If I saw Lance riding his bike, it would be darn hard not to veer right and take him out. Lance may have had cancer, but he still is a cancer. Now Lance's actions were deplorable. And as a fan, I was deeply disappointed. But I think I am even more disappointed and disturbed by the way in which our culture seems to take such great pleasure in those who fall you know, from the pedestal of public acclaim into the mud puddles of their own failure. From sports heroes to political front runners to musical superstars. We as a culture, we love to deride and demonize those who fall from grace. But we seem to fail to understand just how damaging that behavior is. This public delight only serves to drive each of us more deeply into shame. And at some level, we all know, we all know that we have nowhere to go but into the mud puddles of our own failures. We live in the fear that we will be found out and exposed for our own failures and frauds. We would rather live a lie than admit the truth. 
And so we desperately, we avoid the kind of vulnerability and the transparency that makes for genuine community and personal wholeness and choose instead to live in the deadness of our sin, guilt, and shame. I think that's why the story of Peter and John that we read today is so important for us to hear. In our culture, we bury the shame of our failures, desperately fearing that others will discover the mess of our lives and will wind up being verbally skewered like Lance Armstrong. We need to be reminded that the one we worship knows our failures and doesn't shame us or delight in our brokenness, but forgives us, restores us, commissions us, and sends us back into the world, blessed to be a blessing. And that's just what happens to Peter. Peter, he's come a long way from a simple fisherman to a bold disciple. Peter, he's the first to recognize and publicly proclaim that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And in response, Jesus gives him the nickname of the Rock. Peter has pro proudly both proclaimed that he will follow Jesus anywhere, even to prison and even to death. And when Jesus is arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, Peter is the only disciple who doesn't abandon Jesus. He follows Jesus to the courtyard of the high priest's home. Peter the faithful, Peter the brave, Peter the bold, Peter on a pedestal. Until the pressure comes. As Peter huddles around the fire in the courtyard of the high priest's home, three people identify him as one of Jesus' followers. Suddenly, Peter the brave is Peter the petrified. Faint with fear, Peter, he does what comes so naturally to people like us. He lies. He denies ever knowing Jesus. He denies his Lord three times. And in that moment, Peter falls from the pedestal to the pit of guilt and shame. Peter the faithful becomes Peter the denier. Have you ever been there? I have. I have a vivid memory of an experience in junior high. I had a crush on a guy with a bad complexion who wasn't very popular. I remember being in the hallway at school talking to that guy when a group of girls surrounded us. They began to tease me saying that I had a crush on pizza face. I denied it. And I joined those girls in making rude comments about that guy. The hurt in his eyes is seared in my memory. Just thinking about that experience plunges me back into puddles of guilt and shame. But that's why we need to hear the rest of Peter's story. How does Jesus deal with failures like Peter and Lance and you and me? He pursues us. Jesus comes to Peter, he calls his name, he invites him to breakfast, lovingly restoring him to wholeness. Peter, do you love me? Jesus gives Peter an opportunity to express his love and devotion three times, three times, one for each denial. And then Jesus restores Peter's confidence by giving him a place in the mission. Feed my sheep. That's how Jesus deals with failure, frauds, and fear-filled disciples like you and me. He will not let us go. He will not let us be drawn into the mud puddles of our own brokenness. 
He pursues us. He forgives us. He restores us. He makes us whole again. And then, then he commissions us to get back up, to get back out into the mission for which we were created and called. The resurrected Jesus moves us from death of sin and guilt and shame to new life. By grace, we live again. It's a stunningly beautiful thing to behold. It's even a more beautiful to experience. So how do we live out this good news? How do we live into this new resurrection life that is ours in Christ? Let me suggest two possibilities. Maybe you're here today and you've fallen from the pedestal to the puddle. You're drowning in guilt and shame. You know who you are. You know what you've done. And you pray that no one sitting around you this morning will ever find out lest they treat you the way we treated Lance and others who have fallen hard. If that's you, and you're tired of living in the deadness of sin, I want you to know that the one who forgave and restored Peter is the one who forgives and restores you. Give your pain and your past to God, the one who is making all things new, including you. Or maybe you're here today and you know someone who has fallen from the pedestal to the puddle and they don't seem to, able to be able to get back up. You can see the wasting effects of guilt and shame in their life. Then how about being Christ in the flesh for them? Pursue them. Invite them out for breakfast. Remind them that the one who made us is making us new in Christ, forgiving and restoring and bringing us back to life, setting us back on our feet and sending us back into the world, blessed to be a blessing. In a culture that seems to take delight in the pain of others, Let's be Easter people whose lives point to the one who suffered pain so that our pain might be revealed. Let's point to the one who was lifted up on a cross so that we who fall daily from the pedestal to the puddles of sin might be lifted up, forgiven, restored to live again. Because it's apt, I think we're going to go ahead and do Grace Flows Down next.
something else that you leave here today, remember that the grace, it just covers us and surrounds us. Believe it and live it, please. I invite you to stand as we uh, do our confession of faith, the words in which we were baptized. I'll let you get up here. You never know when to come, do you? That's all right. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and of all creation. When we respond, when you hear me say, God, in your mercy, if you would respond, hear our prayer. Holy One of new beginnings, fill us with new life. Send us into the world as you sent your apostles, Philip and James, to invite people to come and see your wondrous acts in Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Revive ecosystems along coastlands that have been devastated by natural forces and human negligence. Reestablish plant and animal life that purifies air and water and that feeds humans and other living creatures. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accompany laborers who get little rest from their work. Give them hope when they struggle to produce what they need. Give all who labor fair treatment and just wages. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Restore all people who cry to you for help. Turn their mourning into dancing, Clothe them with joy and put a testimony of healing and praise on their lips. Lord, we pray for those in our midst right now, for our family and neighbors, for Myron and John, Catherine, Alex, Taylor, Suzanne, Mary, Cheryl, Josh, Amanda, Heidi, and Yola. We pray for the family and friends of Sonny as they mourn his loss. We pray for those whom we now name aloud. For those who need your healing touch, for those still waiting the diagnosis, be with the doctors and technicians as they strive to find what is necessary to and what the treatment may be. You are the great physician. We trust in your care. Lord, in your mercy. Be present to faithful ones who are persecuted for following you. Sustain them by your faithfulness and give them strength in the name of Jesus. God, in your mercy. Join our voices with angels, creatures, and all the saints in praising Christ and bestowing upon him all blessing and honor and glory. Reveal Christ's glory to us and through us in our worship. God, in your mercy, in your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share that peace with one another. I think it's important at the beginning of the service that we can introduce ourselves and but to remember that when we pass the peace, we are actually blessing one another. That you don't have to be a pastor or a priest to bless. You yourselves, it's the priesthood of all believers. And when you say those words, peace 
be with you. That's God's peace that you're offering people. What a blessing that you have just shared with one another. And now, let us pray for our offerings. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome all of us to your table. Reach out through this meal. Reach out through our offerings and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, if you want to get your little cups available. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave it to all, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now let us be so bold to pray in those words our Lord has taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. Let us share this meal together at this time. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives we may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ the living cornerstone, and the life-giving life spirit of adoption bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's do our sending song at this time. Hallelujah, he is coming.
one day I'll look up, I'm gonna see my Lord a coming. Yeah, I'll look up, I'm gonna see my Lord a coming in the cloud. Hallelujah, He is Before we go, I want to invite Claire to come up, and I thought Michelle was up there, and she snuck out on me already. I want to do special prayers for those who are taking communion to our homebound friends and those who are sick. And if anyone wants to join this ministry, come talk to Claire or myself, and we'll be glad to have you participate in this. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose glory is revealed in the crucified and risen Lord, Bless those who go forth to share your word and sacrament with our sisters and brothers who are sick, homebound. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those to whom we bring this communion in the body and blood of your Son, that we may all feast upon your abundant love made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And now, let us go forth. Be so bold to pray, to praise and and the, the good news, and what is the good news? Christ is risen. Christ Indeed. Is risen. Is risen. Indeed. <laughs> There's so much good news. <laughs> Go and serve.